Hello, everybody. Welcome to Arsenal X, Boss Rush's Xbox podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Douglas, and I am here once again with Stoy. How's it going, Stoy? I thought I was supposed to be Jesse this week, and you were supposed to be Stoy. So we talked about this before recording, man. We, <laughs> we could we could technically do that. <laughs> no, that's you, fine. We might as well just go with it. It'll be, it just confused too many people. So <laughs> I'm Stoy. You'll be Jesse today. Okay. So okay. Yeah, it sounds good. But it hi, like, Jesse. <laughs> how's it going? Yeah. How's how's your uh, weekend, Ben? Man, it's been uh, it's been good. We had um, uh, Irish Fest happen in Milwaukee this so uh, this weekend. Oh, okay. So nice. big celebration of Irish music and everything. And it was kind of funny because um, you know, in this day and age now, where like contactless you know money transactions yeah. and stuff, I I go to the ATM, grab a bunch of money. I'm like, okay, all right, you know, thinking, you know, idiot. Oh, I'm gonna pay with cash, but no, everywhere is contactless payment. Yep. Everywhere it's either card or pay with your phone. So I'm like, I got all this cash and I mean, you know, first world problems, I guess. But yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess I didn't need that, but it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of good Irish music around a lot of good. Uh, I, I drank mead. Actually, that was really good. Oh, it was really okay. cool. OK. Um, you know, now, some good Irish themed beers and everything. So it was it was so, a lot of fun. So, OK, so mead. So I've had. I've had something that was called mead is, but I don't know if like, like what I drank is like standard of that's what it is. Is it like essentially like a wine that's made out of like some kind of honey? Like, well, uh, yeah, basically that's what it is. So mead okay. is meat. Traditional mead is honey, water and yeast. Okay. That's okay. it. Okay. You don't need it. You don't need anything else. So basically that's what they did is they took a bunch of mead and mix with a little bit of water in it to kind of water it down and then yeah. threw some yeast in it, sealed it for you seal it for however long you need. And okay. then, yeah, alcohol. But OK, I'm, yeah, I mean, basically I, it's like yeast. The yeast eats up the sugar from the honey, which turns it into alcohol. So, yeah, because I've because I believe the Door Peninsula brand has a mead and that's it's what good. I, that's it's what good. I had. And it is, I have a bottle of so it. Good. I yeah. have a bottle of it actually, because uh, yeah. uh, when we went up to Door County uh, over the summer, yeah, we uh, we totally part. I I grabbed the bottle of that, you know, when we yeah. were up there. So, yeah, yeah, that was amazing because I had never had mead before. Like I didn't. Yeah, I've uh, I've made know it. What it was exactly? So you know, uh, like I, I, I've made mead a few times. Actually, one of my favorite things I like to make is um, uh, acerglin, which is okay. uh, maple syrup mead. Oh, so okay. it's like you mix maple syrup, a little bit of honey. It's like three parts maple syrup, one part honey, water, and then yeast. And, oh. uh, you know, depending on the type of yeast you use, you can use like a champagne yeast to give yeah. it like more of a sparkling dry taste to it. Or you can use like a kind of like a drier, um, a drier, sweeter taste to it. It all depends okay. on the yeast you use. But um, okay. yeah, the Acer Glen, it's like a maple syrup mead that I, I really like. So okay yeah that, see like i'm you know even though i'm from wisconsin i don't do a whole lot of drinking but i do like to try like just try things when i you know every once in a while i'll just feel like trying something um you know like i i honestly until two weeks ago i had never even had paps to... <laughs> hang on hang on <laughs> you've lived in this state for how long exactly that's Jeez. that's how much i just i just never got i never really got into drinking it's it's funny because the first but time you had i to drank, at least tried it or something like that well that's like a staple at like man every wisconsin I've, bar i think i've had beast but i've i've never had paps did you hear uh we were talking about this yesterday because uh somebody came up to me now like I, I, I'm a connoisseur of hams. I <laughs> loves me some hams. If I'm going to go for, you know, a lager beer that's cheap, I'm not going to go for paps. I'm going to go for hams. Hams is yeah. after my own heart. Now, uh, someone told me yesterday that hams is being discontinued. So naturally I, I, I started to break down a little bit and then, uh, cause Miller Coors owns hams and they yeah. distribute it. So, uh, but they're actually getting rid of 11 beers from their lineup. And hmm. thankfully, hams is still going to be made, but ham's special light is not going to be. Okay. 
But we have to uh, we have to give a R.I.P. to Ice House Edge, uh, Keystone Ice, uh, Mickey's Ice, and Miller High Life Light, and Milwaukee's Best Premium. Okay. So, and a so bunch. The, there, there's a bunch of other ones. Huh. Yeah. As long as long as I still have my uh, uh, what is it the sunset wheat uh, like I because see I only drink I like the only beers that I've really found that i that i've enjoyed a lot usually end up being wheat beers uh wheat based yeah for whatever reason you know like those just those just taste better to me for whatever reason but yeah Mm -hmm. um you know like your blue moons and stuff like that i you know with a with a good slice of orange in it is you know is is good i i I go back and forth i mean i'm i'm a lager guy i like the crispness and i love the you know the cool like you know low alcohol content you can like it's like a yeah. chill beer. So like if you're, yeah. you know, hanging out with friends or whatever, like, you know, you, you can pound a good like honey lager or just like a light lager. But, um, you know, I'll go to the uh, I'll go to the double IPAs, the New England IPAs, something a little yeah. bit juicier, too. So it depends. Yeah. And then obviously in the winter, I'm drinking stouts and porters. So, yeah. Yeah. I've, stout, yeah, I mean, I've, it's I've that one of those things I've, in I've, summer, like you, you don't want to drink a stout because that is like the last thing yeah. you want. Because like on a hot summer day, you don't want to drink a thick black beer. Yeah, you know. I, I tried that. I tried that once, uh, uh, stout, and yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not refreshing in the summer. I think, yeah, I think had I been more of a beer drinker, I probably it probably wouldn't be as bad. But it's like, it's like a person who's like only, you know, used to like Starbucks coffee or something. You know, having having a just all black coffee with no sugar, or cream, or anything like that. That's how I I look See, at stouts. Is it's just it's a little bit more. It's it's a much more deeper flavor than just like a regular beer. Well, I think it's just like the the warmness of it because stouts yeah. are generally warm when you drink it, kind of like a Guinness. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I mean, yeah. you can you could drink a Guinness cold, but uh, it, yeah. it's actually you know stouts like that are kind of better warm, warm so to speak okay so um whereas like if you were to drink a warm lager it would taste like piss because oh like, yeah it's it's, yeah. Just, it's just the way it is but yeah um, especially not being a beer drinker and the second it's like even slightly warm i just i can't do it i usually yeah i mean it, it most dep- of my beer out <laughs> like i said it depends because most places yeah. in the world like they serve their beer warm yeah. um but uh, the lagers technically are supposed to be served cold. So you can actually drink like an IPA room temperature and it would taste just fine. It's just like the lagers themselves um, have to be fermented in a cold temperature. So it needs yeah. a cold environment in order for it to be good and in order for it to be like, you know, get that crisp flavor to it. So, yeah, that's why it's like if you ever think like, oh, this beer tastes like piss. Well, it's probably a lager that you're drinking. and It's probably too warm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of like different things, uh, you're going to say speaking of piss. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I did that already. No, <laughs> but uh, earlier today, I don't know if you had seen what I ended up making my my creation. I was thinking about doing. I don't know if you had seen it at all, but uh, no. So so well, so the one day I was sitting or making dinner. The kid, the kids just wanted, you know, your standard classic, uh, you know, uh, cheeseburger, uh, hamburger helper or whatever. Uh, and, and I, I, you know, just happened to look at a box of the Mac and Cheetos, uh, you what? know, Mac, the Mac and Cheetos, Mac and cheese, you know, it's just, it's Mac, Mac and cheese. And Cheetos. Yeah. But it's the Cheeto dust is your cheese makes your cheese sauce for your Mac, what? your Mac and cheese. Yeah, Why? because it, no. Why? because if you love Cheetos, it, it's just Cheeto flavored mac and cheese. Yeah, but so no, you're not, you didn't answer my question. Why? Because they, no, they, no they, because there isn't an answer like that. Doesn't because make, they, this doesn't they, make sense. Because Why can't they, you have mac and cheese with real cheese? Well, Why does it have to well, be Cheeto I'm, dust cheese? Well, this I'm doesn't make sense, your, Jesse. I'm going to blow your mind because while i was there making a making don't, the, don't even tell me it's good don't even tell me it's good because oh, i guarantee it you it's not no it's not so, so I, was making, yourself, I was making the hamburger helper and i'm thinking hmm, hamburger helper it's basically just like mac macaroni and cheese with like hamburger and stuff in it 
So I wonder if I put this mac and Cheetos dust in with hamburger and make a burger that's flavored that way. So so the other uh so today I I ended up making uh cuz I had I had four boxes of the the jalapeno mac and Cheetos. And so they, they, I, what they make uh, so I, yeah. So I Listen, so, just because you can so does not mean you should, okay? Hey, Poor Jeff Goldblum. Hey, you, how do you know until you try it? That's what I. I don't say. need to try That's it. That's how I live. I don't need to try it. <laughs> so I I made a jalapeno mac and Cheeto hamburger. So I put the jalapeno mac and Cheeto dust in the hamburger meat. Then I I got uh and seasoned it that way. Fried those up, then I got um, tempura batter, got jalapenos, cut them into like the coins. Then I put some of the macchiato, the jalapeno macchiato dust in the tempura batter. So then that's also flavored like it. Deep fried the the jalapeno coins, then put them on top of the burger on a bun, ate it, and it was amazing. <laughs> so just wanted to let you know I muted you throughout the entirety of that, so I didn't hear a word you said. <laughs> Good. So you'll, you'll so you'll be surprised when you watch the video of me making. Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, I just I don't know. It's like uh, every once in a while, I'll just like come up with like weird things that I I want to try and make and see if it tastes any good. Mm. Um, Logan does that. Is you know, as you've heard, I'm sure Logan has done stuff like that too. And so he's like, hey, if you ever want to record you, re- you know cooking stuff like that i'll give you my my tiktok login so you can you know like post the video up on the on the tiktok because he does stuff like that on his tiktok as well so that's the interesting thing about the other um uh, jumping on the other podcasts like i don't think i've ever been on the nintendo pow block one but um Mm -hmm. on crossroads where everyone like opens up about the food they eat and i'm like Hey, hey, what, what, what's your favorite kind of pasta? I think that was the last time I was on Crossroads. I was like, yeah, I don't know, man, tortellini, something, whatever. I thought this was a video game podcast, but I guess, you know, food can kind of correlate. Well, yeah, that we've kind of had an ongoing thread because, you know, like I, um, you know, like I always joke and we call it snack chat instead of snack. Well, yeah, I think on our Discord, uh, yeah, on our Discord chat, like Snack Tendo is like probably the most active. Uh, mm-hmm. room in the whole thing because it's like look everybody i'm eating jalapeno cheeto dust burgers for some reason <laughs> and like like I, yeah yeah we need to see <laughs> yeah we've always we've always encouraged people to to, to send in emails about like uh, food questions and stuff like that just because we we all you know like we all just eat a, a lot of garbage sometimes but I mean, it's, I don't know, it's just like a fun little thing that everyone has in common, right? Like everyone loves some good food. And so it's just like kind of uh, like something that we can all all have fun with. And, you know, like that's fair. That's fair. There's we you know, you always got those fun questions that you're like, okay, well, you know, like, you know, what's better this or this. And a lot of times people will be you know, separated, like, you know, whether you're a pie or a cake person or, you know, things like that. So, yeah, that's what that's usually <laughs> been about, things like that. But, yeah. I think, we had, I, think I, I stirred up controversy one time because I think on, on one podcast, I think I asked, like, is cereal soup? Was that on yeah. here? Uh, I, I want to say I forget that... where it was, where, we, where I, I brought up the idea and, like, Someone think, said, no, it's not a soup. It can't be a soup. And I'm like, yeah, but milk is the broth. And then, yeah. like, you mix in the cereal bitch with, yeah. you know, yeah. flavors the broth. Well, yeah, whatever. Well, I'm pretty sure we talked about that, I think, when we when we all had the meetup in uh, in Chicago. I think we talked about something like that during uh, during our pizza when we went out for pizza. Right. Oh, yeah, that's but, right. That's where we talked about it. It's cereal yeah. soup. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but, because Eddie came on to say like, "Is is a pie a cake or something like that?" Or yeah, or whatever. Something, yeah, something like that. I or is, is, is oh, cheesecake I, I asked, cake or yeah, is cheesecake I asked, pie? Yeah, I asked if cheesecake was a was actually a cake or if it was more of a pie. Because <laughs> if that's the case, then pies are cakes too. So yeah, yeah. using that logic, just saying. 
but yeah so all right why don't why don't we get in why don't we get into the the show here so um just a uh just a little housekeeping i'm gonna make it simple like we've got so much stuff just go to our website just go to boss rush uh Boss Rush Network, and now I believe it's, is it? Dot, boss Rush dot net. Dot net. Okay, it's yep. Boss Rush dot uh, I mean, if you change, type in like, Boss Rush Games dot com, yeah. it'll be automatically yeah. redirected to Boss yeah. Rush dot net. But yeah, yeah Boss Rush dot net. Which is usually what I do, because it's changed, I think, like three times. So, but yeah, so I think we've got, we've basically, we've got all of our uh, bases covered on that. It doesn't really matter what you put in. Right, so. yeah. So, but yeah, go, go there and check out, uh, all of our shows. Um, and we, you know, like the, we've also got a, you know, a bunch of, uh, friends of the, of the network, you know, that we're, we're helping promote out there that are part of the network. Um, like the console gaming crew and obviously EXP cast, uh, WSD right and beyond, uh, lore together. And then like we were talking earlier, we've got, you know logan austin um you know everyone over there at like land party and rope talk and and uh trash talk and there's there's just so much stuff there so definitely go to our website and check all that stuff out there's something for everyone so all right and, so and hit up the discord yeah yeah that too you know what i lost rush uh, games discord that's where uh it's where all the magic and all the action happens basically yeah so if you want to chat with a bunch of us you go you just elect to join the boss rush games discord and, yeah you know, there's and there's I, rooms for everything every one of the podcasts on the network and you know the yeah, first part ones and the third and class I, one, the second class ones where uh we all have our own like wasd and beyond has one yep. exp cast we have one on there and Arsenal X, we got one on there too. So yeah, which which I I keep on forgetting that I did this, but I went on our Arsenal X one, and there should be a section under Arsenal X where uh, you can actually put questions for the show because, um, like I don't have control of the Arsenal X uh, Twitter page and stuff like that, or email or any of that kind of stuff. Um, Corey kind of deals with a lot of that. So it would just be much easier if people go to go there, go to the section that's for questions for the show for Arsenal X, and you can write your uh, your any questions for the show that you know that you have there, um, and then we we will uh, start trying to do more questions from listeners, um, you know, because I honestly I enjoy doing that, you know, when we would do that on the other shows. It's fun because you never know what people are going to ask. And so, you know, it, it definitely makes for a fun show because it's like you almost don't, you know, it's unplanned, planned stuff, you know, right? So right. Th that's that's always fun to me because I am I'm not really much of a planner. I, you know, I've gotten <laughs> I've I've had to try to learn how to be a planner with this, sh you know, like hosting a show and getting notes and stuff ready but i'm i'm not a planner at all so like i i enjoy that kind of off the cuff stuff like that where it's where there's not really a whole lot of planning going on in so yeah so definitely give us some questions if you have them so so it, it's, it's actually funny that you mentioned that because um uh we recorded an uh, exp cast we recorded an episode with stephanie today earlier okay. today and uh it was just pat and i and you know stephanie and pat made me take a personality test so apparently <laughs> stephanie and pat took a personality test and they compared their notes and they wanted me to do it too as well so they are both they both were the same um my personality test came out that i am a assertive defender and i have a, a, one of my personality traits is confident individualism so uh basically it says i am very much Part of my personality says I'm very much on task, even yeah. though I procrastinate, but I get the shit mm -hmm. done. So like yeah. a lot of times I like to plan methodically and logically, yep. but I do tend to procrastinate every now and then. But you know what? I get it done, I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I I'm, I've always been a procrastinator as well, but um, like having 80 ADD or ADHD or whatever. Um, like a lot of the times, like if something I know it needs to be done, then I will get very, very, uh, like 
adamant about getting things done or I get stressed out. Like if the house is all messy, like I'm just like, I need this to be clean right now. And I start stressing out and I'll, I'll just like, just go berserk and just like, just start cleaning for hours straight until I, until like all my stress levels go away. And that's like one of the things with ADD is like, you'll, you'll get to like a point a lot sometimes for, or at least for in my case, where like if something is very very important to me that it needs to get done, I will be able to do like a really good job and do it quick and you know there you go which you know like I do that at work as well like I'm I can be very very <laughs> anal about everything at work and like when people like will come to help me, I I just know that no one's gonna do it as thorough and as good as I'm going to. And then it stresses me out because then I <laughs> I have to like try to catch up from what they didn't do as well as I would have, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah, it's but yeah, so that's I that's part of part of me, I guess. But all right. Anyways, why don't we get into uh, what's in our arsenal? Um, Stoy, what's in your arsenal this week? Well, we talked about this beforehand. Um, mm-hmm. I ended up playing and finishing 12 minutes and it's a very interesting game just came out on game pass recently mm-hmm. and just this past week actually. And it's actually been in development for quite a while. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what, what took them so long. I imagine it's small, de- small development studio. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it takes some time, but uh, basically it's like over the top, like we're talking like top down, you know, moving around story based game where like, you're on a continuous loop. Yeah. And it cycles either every 12 minutes or your character dies. Mm-hmm. One of the two. And uh, the, basically the story is you come home to your wife. You greet your wife. She says, hey, I have a surprise for you. I made some dessert, whatever. And then you try to kind of live your life. And then all of a sudden, um, uh, all of a sudden, you know, a knock at the door and it's a cop, quote unquote, shows up at the door and arrests your wife and accuses your wife of murdering your father like eight years ago or something like that. And, you know, when you try to find out more information on why that is, all of a sudden something can happen where all of a sudden you get knocked out. If you let the game play out, like mm-hmm. you let the game play out, you don't interact or do anything, whatever. So then obviously the, the cycle repeats itself. It's like Groundhog Day. And you remember everything. You retain all the knowledge from the previous loop. Mm-hmm. So you have to try to replay the loops knowing more information and then you try to prod you know because the theme is like okay your wife's father was killed at some point and there's a a a whole issue with who did it so Mm -hmm. you you know at some at at one point she confesses because you find out information like hey i know how your father died um you know and she's like how could you know that and it's like well hey funny story this is a good I'm on a continuous loop. I've played this scene before. And mm-hmm. she's like, okay, you're crazy. But then you end up finding out like, hey, this happened, this happened, this happened that you found mm-hmm. out in a previous loop. And then she's like, okay, I get it. So that's how the story progresses. Mm-hmm. It's like little by little. And a lot of it's trial and error. And man, did I do a lot of error. Like, okay, that didn't work. <laughs> so I have to replay the whole scene again. You know, hear the same dialogue options Or she's like, hey, I made us dessert. I was like, yeah, fuck, whatever. I don't care. I heard this the 10 times <laughs> yeah. already. Which you can click on her and say, I don't want to talk right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, and, oh, and, and, rude. <laughs> and no, it's kind of funny. Like, the first thing I did was I literally ate the dessert before her. And yeah. she's like, wow, fucking rude. And she storms off into the bedroom. And you're like, hey, I'm really sorry. I hit the A button at the wrong time. And I didn't realize that that would cause me to eat the cake. That's the reason why. And she's like, well, I don't care. I don't want to talk to you anymore. It's like, oh, okay. All right, I guess I have to restart this loop over again. Yeah, which you, all you have to do is just w- open the front door to your apartment and walk out, which I learned because I, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, even that, that, like I said, yeah. th- that, that restarts the loop again. So, yeah, but there's, you know, there's more than one way to crack an egg. And maybe, and maybe there's a faster way to get through everything. Like if I replayed it now, I bet you I could probably like clean through this game pretty quickly. And... Yeah, but the fact I, that it took me quite a few hours to get through it in terms of like, you know, the trial and error and finding out information here and there, whatever, I could probably find out information a lot faster and get through the game faster now mm-hmm. on the second playthrough. 
because I know what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah, I um, yeah, you'll you'll be able to get through faster for sure. But um, there is still a process that has to happen. Yeah, uh, before you can get to the second part. So it's because the um, I had listened to kind of like a a little thing, you know, about about it. And yeah, there is there is a certain point you have to you have to be able to get to. You got to go through all the you know spending time to make to get to all the the story plots before you can move on to the second part. Um, so yeah, it because is, it's conversational based. So you got to yeah, ask the yeah. questions. You got to ask yeah. more questions. Yeah. Find out more information and then carry what you learn to the next step. Yeah, so. yeah. Because even though you may know what's going on. Your character in the game has to know what's going on before you even get the options for that dialogue. So, yep, yeah, sure. like, which, you know, because like, yeah, and I mean, it's definitely one of those games where you can just start getting in your head and and like there are parts where I was like almost getting like doing like trying too hard. I guess would be a way to say it like trying to like I you know because she's wanting to you know you like at some point obviously you know you need to prove to her what you're saying and and all that and I'm like well okay I learned this about something that she read um like can I use that in the dialogue to be a thing that I now know that that she it seems like I I didn't know. Well, you and talk about her past down, in a lot of yeah. those instances. Like yeah. you talk about like, hey, I know what you did eight years yeah. ago when you ran away from home. I know these specifics, and she's like, I never told anybody that. How could you know that? You know, yeah. or even like the present that she comes out with. She's yeah. like, you you know, you're yeah. like, I know this is a present that you're gonna give me, and I know what's inside. And she's yeah. like, I just bought that today. How could you know that? Yeah. So it's like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's how you prove to her. And maybe you yeah. get a little bit more information just from her talking about, yeah. you know, how her father died and like how she yeah. she thinks she did it and whatever. And she ran away. So. And yeah. And we're we're trying to be somewhat vague about because obviously we don't want to wreck. But yeah, there's there's so much stuff you learn. But yeah, like there, you know, like we've kind of the things that we've talked about have been pretty simple, like basic things. And yeah, you'll you'll definitely find it out pretty quickly. And let me and let me tell you the twist. When you get kind of like three fourths of the way in, you find out, you know, the big twist, and it's like, man, wow. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I haven't gotten that far, but I'm I I I've been trying to figure things out, and I just got stuck. And uh, like, yeah, you kind of let me know that I was doing all the right things. I just didn't. I just didn't do it in the right order. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. don't so don't feel bad if you feel like you're stuck and you're just banging your head against the wall and you didn't you're not getting anywhere. The one like, nice thing about the like, Internet. Yeah, definitely. Because because like like I said to you earlier, what you told me didn't wreck anything for the story. It's all stuff I already knew what, how to do or mm -hmm. had done. It's just to come, you know, combine those things that I was doing to get to the next point. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited. So, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's like I said, the, the acting is done very well. You know, Daisy Ridley does an awesome job. James McAvoy, like amazing job, too. And William Defoe, obviously, is, you know, he's yeah. an awesome character as well. And just, you know, the, the dynamics that they all play, like. Daisy really, I think, does a really good job of like conveying a lot of emotions because obviously a lot of this centers around your wife, you yeah. know, and kind of her experiences. So like, you know, her her dialogue choices are obviously really good. And James McAvoy, obviously, he does a really good job. But which which I didn't know. I don't know if you knew this, but I'm it's kind of a bummer. Like I've I've heard that supposedly whenever, you know, people say, hey, Willem Dafoe, so you're from Wisconsin. He doesn't like that when people bring it up. He doesn't like being associated with Wisconsin for some reason. Never heard Suppos of that. Supposedly. So uh, because, yeah, he is from Wisconsin. He's from uh, um, I think he's from like my like around where I live. I th or I think maybe yeah, I, have I, no don't, idea. I don't remember. But but yeah, he's from Wisconsin. Like yeah. from close close by to i mean i knew he was from wisconsin i just didn't know that that was like a sore yeah. topic for him for whatever yeah. reason I that's don't. at least that's what i heard um 
I don't know. Uh, depending on who I talk to, when I find out, when people find out that I am of Serbian heritage, I'm like, eh, yeah, sure, whatever. So yeah, yeah, it'd be would it be. But otherwise, um, playing that, I, I Quake came out on um, that was announced at QuakeCon this past mm-hmm. weekend. So uh, I ended up playing a little bit of Quake, and uh, you know, for for it being a garbage graph garbage game graphically compared to our first person shooters now it actually yeah. runs really smooth and it actually runs really nice and yeah obviously that nine inch nails uh soundtrack good oh yeah yeah but i, I want to yeah. more so talk about the veil because okay. um i ended up sitting down and playing this game for an hour actually right before recording and i wanted to do this authentically like i literally mm-hmm. wanted to um sit down with a pair of headphones and lay down i just lay down on my couch stared at my ceiling and just played this game holding the controller in my hand because yeah. this game as we talked about i think in a previous yep. episode where this game is meant for um it's it, it, you can play it actually while blind and yeah. the game is a complete audio narrative yep and the best way to play this is to actually play this with headphones mm-hmm. and i would almost say it's required because yeah. there are certain instances where you have to navigate through the game and follow yep. the sound of sound mm-hmm. effects so, yeah. like for example, uh, you're in an air. You, you know, your your character kind of crawls out of a truck, and then she's like, "Hey, I'm thirsty. I need some water." Oh, there's a river nearby. I I'll have to go to in it. Here. So, like, yeah, you have to. It's like echolocation in terms of okay, when the sound of the river becomes in the center point of the, your headphones, then you just move forward. You know, with the L stick, you move mm-hmm. forward and follow the sound of the river. Or like, I was just recently in a shop area where it's like, "Hey, go sell." this at this silk vendor so like you hear this guy saying oh silk for sale whatever so you find the location of his voice and you walk up to it Mm -hmm. but like well like i said there's there's literally nothing on the screen just Mm -hmm. little bubbles and those don't help you at all so that's why it's like you can play this game completely with a blindfold on if you want yeah yeah just lay on your lay on your couch you know xbox controllers are wireless you can plug the headphone right into the jack just sit there and like you said just lay down and just listen you know like completely shut all your other senses off and just focus on yeah i, yeah. I haven't gotten to play this yet but i this is one of those i'm i planned on picking it up next week or this week yeah I should it's really say good here um so the uh but you know, and obviously it deals with combat. So there's there's combat as well. Like your character narrates what's going on, and you know you'll have flashback moments as the story is being told. To like, okay, you know your uncle, you you're, you're supposed to be this princess or something like that, and okay. obviously she's on the run, so people are trying to hunt her down. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you get flashbacks where like your uncle tries to teach you how to fight. So like, you know, I'm at the parts where you have a sword and shield. So like, if you if someone's attacking you. You either hear them to your right or to your left or in front of you. And they always have an audible tell where they're about ready to like, you know, their armor shifts and they they kind of like yell or exclaim like they're ready to kind of swing at you. Mm-hmm. So you could lift the shield up to block. So you, you hold the L stick to lift the shield up to block and then the right stick pointing whatever direction you want to go attacks mm-hmm. them. You could attack them as they're kind of trying to swing or you could just block them and then swing from there. And then, yeah, you could hit them multiple times, but, like, obviously, you, if you swing too many times, you get tired. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, in some instances where, like, you got enemies all around you, so, like, an enemy swinging at you, so you block, you attack, and then you hear it from your right side where you got to do the same thing. So you, you mm-hmm. flick the controller to the right to attack and just – it's really – man, I've never played a game like this before. <laughs> Yeah, it's it it's sounds so, it sounded so awesome. It's so unique and so like engaging because like the acting is done really well, the sound quality is so good, you know, everything around you still feels alive and just you know, yeah, so cr- crisp and clear, like audible wise and yeah, you know, yeah, he's the actors, like, the actors so far are doing, you know, are, are are just, you know, they play their parts really well, like yeah, obviously as you're trying to escape as your prince as a princess, you encounter a shepherd who kind of tries to guide you and then you know flashbacks to your uncle and even like soldiers as they come by like oh she's blind like this is an easy one and then it's like she kind of kills them and then it's like oh, oh boy okay so yeah well it was cool just listening to the guy you know um talk about like making it he's like you know like obviously there's no visuals 
in this game. So we we got really got to spend that money on making sure that we have top of the line sound and and you know quality acting because it's it's so important because you know once you take away you know f- uh, you know the uh, visual gameplay. You yeah, know, like you, you've you've That's got obviously takes up a majority of the budget to begin with. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah I it's... imagine they use those like 3D audio spatial microphones. So like mm-hmm. when someone's talking to you, sometimes you'll hear them more from your right or from your left. Like mm-hmm. you know, if they're sta- kind of like if they're standing like off to your right as they're trying to talk to you. So <laughs> it's very it's very immersive and it's it's such a unique way to play the game. Play a game where it's like you just lay down and you just hold the xbox control in your hand and you're just like this is really cool navigating through the options menu obviously there's a narrator Mm -hmm. and a a narrator will tell you like to to you know swing your sword flick the right analog stick toward the direction you want to swing or if you hit the pause menu they'll say you'll, you'll flick up and down with the left stick and it'll tell you like what you know you're on game options or you're on control layout and stuff so yeah well, and I I'm I don't know for sure, but I'm I would imagine they probably used Dolby Atmos uh, to make it because Dolby Atmos is like like especially for headphones, it's it's a way that you can you can make your headphones be like you've got a 7.1 surround sound in your headphones. I almost don't think so because uh, I I mean I, my headphones are not Dolby Atmos certified. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, any, I know Dolby any Atmos headphone. gives you that. Dolby Atmos gives you that kind of like, okay, you can hear it up high and you can hear yeah. it down low. But, uh, but te- technically, if you have Dolby Atmos on anything, it doesn't matter what headphones you use. That's why it's so good because it, it literally it can turn the crappiest headphones into surround sound. Like that's yeah. that's what it's made for. But. Like, cause like, uh, you know, and this is not to go on too much of a tangent, but I've actually (laughs) at work by myself, you know, middle of the night, I've, (laughs) I've gotten scared off of listening to some podcasts where people just had like microphones that they must be using microphones that are really good at picking up like sound that's like, and I've like heard like, you know, something falling on the podcast but i could have swore to god it was happening in the room i was literally in because my my uh my phone has adobe atmos and i have it on that all the time and so like sometimes it just sounds so real like it happened in the room that i've i've literally like flinched and like looked around because i could have swore the sound i just heard was in was around me but it wasn't. It was on the podcast I was listening to. It's it's crazy, like where sound is, like especially for headphones when you're yeah, dealing no with that kind of stuff. But I mean, I don't know how you record. Uh, I I record um, uh, when we upload our episodes. I, I I upload them in mono, partially because the file size is usually smaller. But yeah, um, yeah I don't. Uh, I I know sometimes we get background noise, but it always sounds like it's coming from the center, from the yeah. center speaker. But yeah, yeah, if you're an, if you're an audiophile, um, I mean this is a this is a good game to really play with a good really or like a really good set of headphones. But uh, yeah. a really yeah. good really good kind of captivating story so far. I'm actually pretty pretty at, psyched up to kind of keep playing this. So okay, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward. It's twenty bucks, so you know oh, okay. depending on depending on who who you talk to, like maybe it's just a steep price for just an audio only game, but. Uh, it actually, they're donating a lot of the portions to like this, uh, you know, blind charity in Canada. So I think, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it goes to a good cause. So, and it's, yeah. it's definitely, it sounds like it's a meaty game. So there's a lot more to the game. Yeah. yeah. And if, and if you, they said, if you're finding it too easy, there's like a super hard mode. So there's like a really, really hard mode. And he said, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. No, um. <laughs> I mean, I'm playing it on normal, and I'm, yeah. I mean, it's a challenge, so yeah, it's enough. Yeah, so well, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, so that's that, what I've been playing basically. Nice. All right. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I actually did play a little Quake too, and I, I actually told my kids to come over. I'm like, kids, come here. You want to see what first person shooters used to look like when they first started? <laughs> and I showed them, and they're like. 
wow, that looks really bad. Even the bullets do. I'm like, yeah, yeah. doesn't it look like basically Minecraft? <laughs> yes. So, yeah. yeah. That's where the retro inspiration kind of came from is like, yeah. you know, bringing back old game stuff. But is, yep. it runs surprisingly smooth. Like, yeah, even at 60 does. frames it really a second. Smooth. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I opened up the field of view to, like, a, over 100-something. And when you're going fast, it's it it feels like you are you get that a little bit of an adrenaline rush of, like, going super fast, like, just flying through it because it's so yeah. buttery smooth. But, yeah, it, yeah, I was enjoying that. But, yeah, then also um, I tried, uh, which was also a newer game on Game Pass, I tried that Recompile which this is essentially a a third uh third person metroid game so it's you know it's very similar to like prime and stuff but it's you know more third person um i i don't know how i feel about this game yet i haven't put a whole lot of time into it i like certain aspects of it but my only problem i'm having is there it's almost a little too minimalistic for me like like graphic wise like your mm -hmm. character is just like these little fuzzy like lines uh that's like somewhat resembles like an outline of a person kind of with this like mm -hmm. weird looking gun thing that's you know similar to metroids here to uh not metroid to samus's uh you know gun like blaster thing on her arm you almost uh, called her metroid didn't you yeah yeah i did <laughs> um so like it's like the whole idea of it is obviously with recompile if you know anything about like you know like computers and stuff you've probably heard that word before but it's like essentially you're you're like a, a virus type thing and you're you're like moving your way through these you know electric like through through like circuits and all that stuff but it but they try to make it resemble things that we would see in real life but you kind of know that what you're you know kind of what you're doing i because so the thing is is like i do like a lot of visuals in this game but at the same time there's some stuff that is just too minimalistic for me that i just don't i don't quite understand the like why why they did some of this stuff but like overall i think it, it's it's been fun to play it's just it definitely is like a you know it definitely feels like an indie game like it like i i guess i just really really just want i guess i'm not else. understanding is it is it not captivating you is it like the action not catching on or whatever it's not or is it not see, fun see that's that's the thing is like it is but sometimes it's it's not like sometimes the the interactions with the world that you're doing to get places aren't really that creative for me and just kind of are boring but mm -hmm. there are parts that you get to that uh, make it kind of worth the boring parts so like that's why i'm saying i'm having a hard time of kind of like knowing where i'm at with this game i think i if i played i think i want to play it some more and then see how i feel once i get a little bit because i really haven't played a whole lot of it because mm -hmm. i got i got kind of stuck in the beginning because i wasn't sure which direction because it it definitely like there's no map or anything so it can it's one of those games where it can kind of get confusing as to where you're where you need to go because it doesn't really tell you there isn't a whole lot of hand holding it'll just say like yeah you can't you know it'll say you can't do this and this until you've done this but it doesn't tell you where that thing that you need to do is to be able to you know to move forward you know it's so it is some um, similar to like the original uh metroid game where i mean there the, in that game there wasn't a whole lot of hand holding either so um but yeah it's just more of a, a more of a third person kind of 3d version of a metroid game like i said you know but yeah it's uh, like i said i don't really know how i feel exactly completely yet but but I, I do care enough to, to, you know, play some more and see, see where it goes um, and how I feel about it then. But um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. And that, again, that's on Game Pass. 
Um, okay, so Death's Door. So I had finished the story, but I didn't like finish the 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 full ending of the game. And so in order to do that, um, there was there's 50 there's these seeds that you plant in pots and then those pots, those seeds turn to flowers. And those are like kind of like your bonfires and like uh, Dark Souls games where that you go there, you 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 know, the flower will wilt and then you'll get your butt in turn, you get your health refilled. Um, and so there's 50 of these seeds throughout the game and part of finishing the game is you had to find and plant all 50 of those seeds and um the only thing that sucks is like i didn't find out until later like because i'm like okay well i was missing two seeds or or missing one seed and i but i needed to plant two i had one seed needed to find one more and then needed to find out where these pots were that I needed to plant them in. And I was like, okay, this is going to be crazy. I'm like going through like almost every single level, like just searching everywhere. And after I spent like, I don't know, two hours, like just searching through like every single bit of every single level, I find out that what I was, what I was thinking was the, the case ended up being the case. So after you beat the final story, what I was these... thinking was the case ended up being the case. I like the way yes. you phrased that. <laughs> yes. Well, because I, I was like, I think this, but I'm not sure. And it, so what it was is when you go to different mat, uh, the different levels, there's all these doors in your like main hub area and you go through those doors and they'll take you to different parts of the different levels that, that exist. So after you beat the story, you'll notice some of the, the doors are, are glowing red and some of them will just be the, the black and white like the, that area is at that point in time after you beat the, you know, the final boss or whatever. Um, and so what it is, is I found out too late, is the red doors mean that you are missing something in that area. And so that's how you have to find out like where I need to go to find these last things to get the full final ending. Mm. And so I did end up doing it. I didn't hundred percent the game because one of the things that you need to do is beat the whole entire game using nothing but the umbrella that you're given in the very beginning, which only does like half the damage of the very first sword that you get. That's so in other words, everything is going to take a lot of attacking with that umbrella to beat things. So I I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm going to do that. I may try because I love this game so much that honestly I I'm going to want to come back to it at some point and might as well try it, you know, and try to hundred percent it. So Yeah, sure. So yeah, but I mean, kind of reminds the, me of the achievement that you can get. I think playing one of the dead spaces where you could, you get an achievement or a trophy where uh, you beat the game entirely just using the plasma cutter. Yeah, just the very first one you start yeah. off with. Yeah, yeah, which arguably is probably it's easier said than done. Than done, yeah. But even like still like, if you power that thing up, like it actually can pretty do some decent damage. Yeah. But. So. All right, yeah, and then and then I uh, jump back into some Resident Evil Village again. Um, I'm not sure how far along in it I am, but I, I where are you? I'm, I'm I think I'm just meeting the the werewolves. I just started shooting werewolves for the first time. I think. And you were at the beginning of the game. Well, no, like like people that look like werewolves. Yeah, this like is the not, beginning of the game. <laughs> Well, I get a game. Remember the whole big scene where all of a sudden they start swarming you, and then all of a sudden oh, one yeah. werewolf riding a horse okay, shows up. No, yeah, no, never. No, not there. Um, I'm where werewolves I werewolves ride horses in I, this game. I horses. Yeah, I, I for, it's just I I put it aside. I forgot you did run into the people those people. Right. Um, but because like I know the vampire people or whatever they are, obviously. But yeah, I forgot you did run into them early on. Well, there. So I'm I'm at a part where I I talked to the old lady, um, where I was trying to find Rose, my daughter, or whatever, 
and she laughed at me and said something about the four bloodlines and then left and then i grabbed a key from her thing bro you have a ways to go yeah i know i i, I thought i thought i thought you'd be deeper into it by now no, but yeah no, I, okay so I, you're I pretty much in the beginning yeah i'm i'm probably yeah like one one fourth of the way done with it or something because i beat like i beat the you know the tall lady. i would say I, I would say you're about a sixth okay you're about right. a sixth well the so. hey i mean that's that's good news because honestly i'm enjoying this game so yeah i'm you know i'm 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 looking forward to more more time in this world because it's it's good. It's, it's actually probably one of the more developed uh, games in terms of character development than yeah. uh, some of the more recent Resident Evil games. I was actually pleasantly surprised. I beat yeah. the game uh, pretty quickly, okay. actually. Yeah. I am a Resident Evil fan to the core. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, I, mean, I beat this game in less than a week. I planned on it because like when Resident Evil Remake 2 came out, I literally sat down and I just played it and played it and played it. I think my first time I sat down, I, I, I think in two days, two days, I, like by the second day, I not only finished the first run through, but then I finished the, the first run through with the other character. And then like, I think started, or I just finished the first, you know, the run through with both characters in less than like two days. Mm -hmm. because i just wanted to i just wanted to blow through it because i was so excited i had played the the demo that we got you know i played it like three or four times because i had different accounts that i that i downloaded it with so i could play it again um you know and stuff like that but um but yeah i, I had a, i had planned on just sitting down and trying to just blast through this game but so many other things just came up and and you know like not that i wasn't liking it but i i just i was you like just gotta, okay, gotta dedicate the time gotta yeah and i wanted time. to i wanted to savor it i'm like you know i who knows when when the uh next you know big resident evil that i'm really gonna be looking forward to comes out um i i don't know i i would like to see zero and stuff get like a get like that or re2 it, yeah, I it love seems like zero. they've been doing yearly releases uh over the last like few years like i mean yeah you had you know, Resident Evil 2 remake, and then after that, Resident Evil 3 remake, and then you got The Village. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so I wonder I wonder what next year is going to bring. I mean, I know we got Resident Evil 4 VR version coming sometime at, yeah. at the end of the year or next year on Oculus. Which, but. Yeah, which I always, I, I there's there was that ongoing joke with me and me and Ed where I told them that, I, that Resident Evil 4 is the worst game ever, and... Blah blah blah. I just did not like the the shooting stuff and all that when it first came out. Um, you know, I love the story of that game. I just everything else around it, I'm not a fan of. So I I am probably one of the most excited for the VR version because I want to be able to play that game with good controls. Because as as of now, there in my opinion, there is not a version of that game with good controls so I you are know. you are an interesting person you are a very interesting person yeah. not even gonna go not even gonna continue down this path <laughs> so yeah let's just move yeah. on yeah yeah we'll we'll move on so yeah so that's that's what what we've been playing um all right so arson news ax news whatever you want to call it um so we had QuakeCon. It was like three days of QuakeCon, I think, technically. It yeah. was just a lot of, like, you know, like uh, uh, contests and stuff of people versing one another in Quake games and stuff like that, mostly, for most of the time, honestly. But, um, yeah, the like, they basically, they started it off, and, and it's, well, and they're kind of celebrating 25 years of QuakeCon, so... This was the 25th year that that they've done this, which is just insane. But I mean, hey, you know, like the, these games have been around for a while. But. I think it's technically 25 years of Quake because Quake came out 25 is it? years ago. Okay. Yeah, okay. I don't think they've done QuakeCon routinely because I, I I don't think like it really became like a good tournament until uh, Quake Three Arena, and okay. then Bethesda kind of co-opted to be like, yeah. their their conference, so to speak. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, which I, I don't know about you, but yeah, like Quake and 
Quake and and Doom and all those games, those those were like those were what really got me into you know to shooters because I you know I grew up at the time when those those were the thing to play on PC. <laughs> oh yeah, those were the I mean those literally paved the way. I mean Doom, yeah. Wolfenstein 3D was kind of like the first popular first person shooter and you know doom kind of perfected it from there uh, at the time they perfected it and then yeah. when you know 3d games started becoming popular that's when quake hit the market and it was like fully 3d models fully 3d environments you know yeah. um i mean granted it still looked it, it didn't look the greatest i mean at, at not comparatively comparatively now it doesn't look the greatest because obviously we talked about earlier um where you can actually play it now in like 4k you yeah. know remastered 60 frames a second and stuff but it's like, man, when this game came out 25 years ago, this was the pinnacle. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Pinnacle like, of graphics. You were just like, oh, you can do that. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Like, wow, that's amazing. Like, you can actually look up and down and stuff like that. Like, it was yeah. so cool. Yeah. And yeah, now nowadays, when you think about like all the advancements in first person shooters at the time, were so groundbreaking that we take for granted now. So yeah. these kids don't know how lucky they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's, you know, like, I think I'm I'm interested in just seeing because I've heard, you know, so like starting it off, though, the first thing they uh, they announced uh, the Quake remaster, which obviously if you looked at if you looked at your, uh, you know, your game pass or or your front page of your Xbox, you've seen that it's already out. Um, and yeah, and like we said, we both kind of played it and stuff and, and it's, I'm, I'm curious to see how many people that, that are just super young that, you know, don't know anything or don't know a lot about that, you know, are, are out there trying it and stuff. And cause yeah, I mean, it does look simultaneously bad and good. <laughs> like when you're playing it. You yeah, it, it runs really smooth, actually, surprisingly. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, even like Doom, if you play it on the Series X, actually runs pretty smooth. I yeah. mean, granted, it's not going to be like, you know, like current Doom, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, it still runs pretty good. And obviously yeah. it's more it's more of an ode to us older gamers that remember those days, you know. Yeah, for sure. So for sure. And then, yeah. And so like. Oh yeah, I didn't I didn't mention, but I'm just gonna hit on just a couple highlights here. So, uh, Fallout 76 uh, is getting some uh, some updates as well. You know, some just yeah. kind of things to. Bethesda to make still that... wants this game to work. <laughs> well, I, the thing is, is the people who are playing it still absolutely love it, and and just like think that they've done a really good job of like like making this game better than what yeah. it was when it originally released. I mean, yeah, it, it definitely had a lot of a lot of just bonker things that went wrong in the beginning of its launch, but I I've been tempted to honestly download it and just try just try it. I you know, like for me personally, I the second that they showed Vats in a real time game, I'm just like, nope. <laughs> yeah. Because Vats just does not work in a real time and and so like that i just i don't know that that's really where i was just like i don't think i can really get into this game because that just does should not work on paper so i don't know but people people are liking it and you know they're there it sounds like the updates they're doing are gonna you know be some pretty yeah you know, i mean yeah it did definitely did have a rough uh first year but uh bethesda was committed to make it work and make it happen and yeah it's paying off for them now so yeah and then the one that i really like when this game came out i hit it hardcore for so long but now like that was before i had kids yet and the second i had kids goodbye elder scrolls online <laughs> well i was gonna say the um What's what they got coming out for Fallout 76 is actually they're going to be uh, uh, actually custom worlds and public worlds. Yeah, so you can yeah. actually like build your own worlds and, uh, you know, share them with friends and, you know, in yeah. the uh, in the game itself. It's kind of kind of yeah, cool, I guess. Yeah, it's 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 similar to that big craze that was going on with everyone wanting to show people their islands and uh, and uh, um, Animal Crossing. So right. yeah, like because they did on the on the show, they did the nuke it or what was it? It was something or nuke it. 
but they, they they were doing a whole show that was the you know people showing off their their uh, houses in yeah. the game, and then you chose whether you liked it or you wanted to nuke it. Yeah, it was, it was kind of interesting. I didn't watch a whole lot of that, but I I watched a little bit of it just to kind of get the understanding of, of what the whole uh concept was for the for that in in game show that they kind of recorded mm-hmm. but but yeah it's it's definitely interesting i mean you know like that is the one thing about you know games like that where if they give you a a good chance to really customize your your little living space and and stuff like that i mean so many people like that's important to them you know those kind of things are important in a, a living game like that, you know, or constantly online game. So, but yeah, the, the, like I said, like Elder Scrolls online, um, they just kind of gave some little thing. They said that it, it uh, passed uh, 19 million players, I believe they said. So, yep, so 19, 19 million players. 19 and um, uh, actually, to, like, you'll, you'll, it'll be out by the time you listen to this, but Walking Flames DLC will be out. Um, for uh, consoles, actually, no, uh, it'll be launched on PC, yeah, on August twenty third. But then on consoles, it'll be out on September eighth. Yeah. So, so and uh, yeah. Oh, oh, like one more thing too about the Quake Remastered. That that's on all consoles. Yeah. So that that is not it's still not a, an Xbox like exclusive thing either, which I thought personally was cool because I mean. You know, like the thing is, is yes, they are owned by Microsoft, but there are things like that where it's just like, you know, like let's let's let everyone have it because it's Mm -hmm. not, you know, it's not really. It just would feel wrong. I, I feel like not not letting, you know, people have that something simple like that, you know. To right, just for sell sure, it. yeah. Because it's more of a yeah, celebration, and, and Qu- right? Quake two and Quake three are on uh, Game Pass for PC. Yep. I believe. Yep. Yeah. 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 They had add yeah, they add those as well to the yeah, to the Game Pass stuff. So just yeah. not on um it, it sucks because I really liked Quake Two. I would love to play that on my console, but I guess yeah. I'll have to play it on my PC. Yeah. Yeah, I I would imagine I I think my PC should be able to run that, but you think so? Yeah. Bro, these games are 20 years old. I'm pretty sure your PC could run it. <laughs> but I mean, I, your Chromebook, your Chromebook could run Quake 2, bro. Well, wait, is it is it just the originals or yeah, is it's it the original? Like the they football? didn't remaster it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's the original. Okay, see, I I wasn't sure of that. I I didn't quite catch whether it was just the original. Okay, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Machine yeah. Games took the uh, took the reins on uh, remastering it. You know, with like 4K, six frames a second. You know, yeah. I think it even runs at 120 frames a second at some point. But uh, yeah, the Qu- Quake Two and Quake Three are just just ports. You know, okay. no okay. no upgrades to them whatsoever. Okay. Yeah, and then they then they announced that uh, Skyrim was hitting its 10 year anniversary. It's like, and how are they celebrating? How uh, are they going to celebrate the 10 year anniversary? They, yeah, aren't they coming out with the uh, Series X, <laughs> like yeah. a, a new console version of of those? Yeah, yeah, which on the exact 10 year anniversary of its initial release. Great, you can play it on your PS5 and Series X. Yeah, I mean, what is that like? That almost like five or or almost 10? 10, 10. So we 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 had them come release. out for the. 360 and PS3 versions, and then obviously PS4 and Xbox One, and we had it come out for VR as well, so both uh, PSVR and Oculus, and then also too, it's out on the Switch, and now it's coming out for. So yeah, that's like almost the, five. Yeah. I mean, hey, you know, like uh, if people keep buying, uh, people must keep buying it, so. <laughs> well, it's free. It's free yeah, if you yeah. own the PS4 version and the okay. Series X version, which is nice. Yeah. But uh, I mean, the one nice thing that they did this is obviously, apparently, if you care about fishing in video games, it's got fishing in this, and oh. it's got over uh, 500 unique uh, Bethesda crew. Because, like, you know, if you download Skyrim on the PC, there's like tons of mods. Yeah. Tons of quality of life mods, tons of graphical update mods. 
you know, um, yeah. more realistic graphics on Skyrim. Like, I mean, if you if you wanted to, man, you could you could beef up the graphics on Skyrim like tenfold. But um, <laughs> yeah, so with all these 500 unique pieces of Creation Club content, it includes like quests, you know, new quests, new dungeons, new bosses, new weapons, like tons of stuff. So yeah, yeah, I I, I played it. Like I didn't play all the way through it. I played it. I think on, I think I played it on 360, and then I played it more recently. Uh, I didn't play I've it tried. on Switch, but I've I, I've tried to play this game twice and just not just enough. Not into it. it. You know, I, honestly, I just don't like the Bethesda clunky controls. Yeah, yeah. I, I think see. I don't That's know why what I'm hopeful it is. for Starfield. I'm hopeful for okay. Starfield that they ditch their old clunky control system. That's why it's yeah. like I couldn't even get into Fallout 4 because I'm like, you you just basically just, I don't know, using the same engine that you've been using for the last 10 years. Yeah, see, I don't know what it was, but I, like Elder Scrolls, for whatever reason, their controls worked for me. But but for me... Yeah, like they were my, for a lot of people. My my main problem with Fallout is it wasn't until recently that when you aimed out down sight wherever your sight is would actually shoot there. Um, what? Even though you like, so you know, like when you're aiming down a sight, if you're doing it in real time, not using the vats, like if you've got a sight on your gun and you look through it and you shoot, it it didn't it most of the time it didn't matter where you were aiming it would never it wouldn't always hit them because it doesn't go by that it would that system would never work for me it would like oh uh, yeah that was kind of a that was kind it was of the like D&D rules rule set of just like you know um how much luck and how much skill you had yep. and how lucky your shots would land yeah, yeah so it didn't the first matter mass effect was like that yeah, it didn't matter how good I was at actually and that's aiming. That's my one mention of Mass Effect per episode. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so the the next thing then after Sky the Skyrim stuff, then they they talked uh, quite a bit about uh, Doom Eternal and the uh, uh, update six point six six, which of course you know is just perfect. So, yeah, they they said the so here's some, just some bullet points. Uh, the World Spear and Mars Core, I believe it was called, are the new multiplayer maps. And I, I don't know if those are, I think they said those were already out, but either they're already out or that that's like what they're, what they have coming like very, very soon. Yeah, it says coming soon. I don't know exactly yeah, when. But. Yeah. And so the, the, you know, they were also going to be including a horde mode. Mm hmm. Um, which you know, in in this kind of game, makes complete sense. Absolutely, uh, complete sense. Yeah. Yeah, and then the update to the battle mode, which now I don't I don't know a whole lot about this game. I from the gist is this is just your basic uh, person, you know, PvP. I'm guessing mm -hmm. the battle yeah. mode. Uh, so they yeah they're making some updates, uh, quality of life updates to that. Battle mode is basically what they call their multiplayer modes. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, and all this stuff, yeah, will be coming later next year or later this year. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that, that, that was the, the gist. I mean, obviously we also seen, um, death loop there and it looked like an, a phenomenal game, but we won't be getting that for another year or whatever. So, but, so I'll, I'll let those guys on, uh, on the PlayStation podcast, talk about that, that, you know, one big thing that they have there to talk about. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. And then, I'm, not that, I'm not that interested in uh, Deathloop, which is kind of interesting. It's just, it doesn't look like a game for me. I think the, the rogueness, the roguelikeness of it, it's like, yeah. it turns me off. Okay. Yeah, see, for me, I didn't, I really wasn't interested in it. It wasn't until more recently of you know well and well seeing like the video footage of it like it looked amazing it just looked amazing and i liked the goofiness that they're bringing into it mm -hmm. um so the you know that really spoke to me like i i like when you know like uh, like i i liked the the first borderlands game but i i just never really could get into the second one but i love 
I love when they mix that humor type stuff into it, but mm-hmm. yeah, so. All right, so the next unfortunate thing, which, I mean, I don't know. I guess it, it is what it is, but uh, so Halo Infinite uh, will be lacking campaign co-op and forge mode at launch, and we could be possibly waiting six months for those those uh, modes, which you know is kind of a I bummer. I would see them. I, I would see them releasing the co-op, the campaign yeah. co-op mode before Forge. Forge. Because yeah. Forge sound Forge is would be more of a daunting task, I would think, than campaign co-op. Which yeah, I'm I, I you know I'm wondering if this kind of delay is trying to alleviate crunch time because we're starting to see more mm-hmm. of these type of delays lately from developers. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I want to say it's almost like a commitment to just like, well, listen, we could like work 12 hour days, seven days a week to get this out on time, but we obviously want to address the crunch factor. I mean, I don't have any proof of that. I mean, yeah. the only thing they said is that, you know, basically they're hundred percent committed to just release the game. Yeah. But they haven't said much in terms of like why, why they're delaying the other features. But well, um, they, they 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 did say uh, basically, as we focused the team for shutdown and really focused on a quality experience for launch, they made the tough decision to delay shipping. You know, so I, I don't know what they mean by as we focus the team for shutdown. I don't know if that meant like literal like you know where they're developing the game that they have to work for remotely. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think well, and you know, and obviously we're. They're almost half the half the United States isn't vaccinated, and so unfortunately we're seeing like you know like so lots of spikes and things. So I think you know like part of me wonders if they're you know they're they're like oh well yeah I don't think we're going to be going back to a regular you know uh, all working in the same place like we were possibly hoping we could mm-hmm. you know. Um, and stuff like, you know, like, cause I mean, it's just, you never know how things go, but, but I, you know, like, honestly, I do think you have a good point because they have, you know, made comments, you know, in the past where, you know, they're trying to stay away from that kind of stuff, you know, of yeah, over, the crunch. Over, overworking and, and, you know, and to, to be honest, like, I think, I think multiplayer and campaign are still coming day one right like oh yeah absolutely so so like because remember originally it was going to be that the game would come out but multiplayer wouldn't be coming out until later so so like maybe they they decided to instead focus on multiplayer and focus on the campaign and then worry about those those in between things for later and and so the plan you know, is for halo infinite to launch with because uh, they're doing the multiplayer in seasons yeah so we're talking like single player mode and season one of multiplayer will come out at the same time yeah and then they also said uh, whenever season two comes out that's when co-op campaign will be released okay and then when season okay. three comes out forge will happen i okay. would not be surprised if we wouldn't see forge till like late next year yeah yeah, because I mean, you know, like I was gonna say too, like you know, we've got to remember that this is a brand new, um, this is a brand new, uh, uh, it's uncharted engine. territory for them. Yeah, and it's a yeah. brand new engine. So trying to get figure out how Forge works in the brand new engine, you know, like how to make it, you know, things ac- accessible and easy to to figure out for a uh, for a person who doesn't know anything about you know, like, uh, video game editing and like doing it on their side mm-hmm. because yeah, you, you know, like you hear about people talk about, you know, the whole process of, of making a, a very, uh, a character that you can build and have lots of options of hair and things to put on them. Like from the back end, I've learned previously that or recently, I should say, that that's not an easy thing to program into a game to give you the those kind of options. Like it takes a lot more time than you than you'd imagine to to make a you know a system that does that for people. Oh and yeah. So, so so yeah. So imagine just though now you're dealing with 
creating a whole entire maps. So yeah, I can only imagine the time it would take to figure all that stuff out and how to how to create it. So, but well, yeah, I think I mean, uh, you know they, they they'll be working in phases. I mean, ultimately, yeah. multiplayer. You know, with a game as big as Halo, yeah. you're gonna have like millions of players at launch. So trying to temper um, content and temper good content, you know, they don't want this game to come out broken in any way. Yeah, and I think they're learning their lessons from other developers coming out with like broken content. So they want to make sure everything's running tip top 100% on launch. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, um, admittedly, reading into this IGN article, I think they said like seasons will last every three months. So it's not like we'll be waiting that long, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So giving them time to kind of perfect, get all the bugs out and the kinks out in the initial phases of multiplayer. So then, when you know. We they launch the co-op campaign, you know, it'll actually be running smoothly and perfectly because the one thing about the single player games is we talked about this earlier with the Halo, the approach you're going to go with. It's going to be a lot of open world, like massive level mm -hmm. level style content. It's mm -hmm. not going to be like corridor based like the way it used to be mm -hmm. or, you know, kind of like a strict linear path. Like we're talking like you could take multiple branching paths to complete your objectives. Yeah. It kind of reminds yeah. me of the uh, more recent uh, Battlefield games, their single player campaigns. Yeah. Which, you know, it's like you get this big map and it's like, okay, all right, here are your three objectives throughout this entire map. You can do mm -hmm. anything in any order that you mm -hmm. want. Yeah. So I yeah. imagine that's the path that, that Halo's going to go with single player. Yeah, I think, I think, and I think that's the thing is a lot of people are going, I mean, there, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be bummed because they wanted to day one play with friends, you know, co-op the, the, you know, the story and try to just. Yeah, knock, it kind of bumps me out, out because I would like to play yeah. the campaign, co you know, yeah. co-op, but yeah, that was always the fun thing about playing the last, the last few, obviously, but yeah. it'd be what it be, deal yeah. with it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, that's the thing. I yeah, I'd rather I'd rather the uh, the teams be healthy and you know getting you know not being overworked than you and know, you want getting, the and you want the content something. to be perfect when it comes yeah. out. You don't want it to yeah. be full of buggy messes or like the co op campaign is like dropping players left and right. Like you want it to be good. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That you know that's and that's the thing is yeah I just. I was, I was bummed for like maybe a minute and then I, you know, you start thinking about it and it's like, well, you know, honestly, I, I'm just glad that we're getting, you know, like, because I'm, you know, obviously I'm going to play the campaign, but I'll probably jump in a couple of multiplayer ma matches or something, you know, on the weekends. Yeah. So and, you got stuff. stuff. So you got yeah, stuff. So yeah There's stuff so if i want to play with friends i'll be playing in you know multiplayer which you know will still be what it is so all right the next the next thing on here i don't know if you got a chance to watch the video at all for that the black black myth uh wukong oh yeah i did okay yeah because we had seen this uh quite a while ago but now we got a new trailer because they decided to um shift forward and move this game instead into unreal 5 and this is technically the first like authentic like actual game that's being made that we've seen in unreal 5 that's using dlss and yeah the the snow in that in that game just insane like the snow physics and stuff and just the way things looked it just looks so good yeah, I, I'm really I'm really interested in this is something that literally I didn't know anything about. But like looking at this, I wanted to know more. <laughs> well, and yeah, like, it's made by know. an obscure Chinese development team. And, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. A, it's a game focused on Chinese mythology and Chinese lore. So, yeah, you know, like, you know, so it's um, all they do is like they showcase like, oh, here's a trailer, like no context. Yep. Here's just a gameplay yep. trailer with some some pretty epic combat and I, I i remember watching the video and like he was doing he was fighting one of the bosses and he was doing a lot of dodging yeah and i i think he was trying to showcase like the snow effects and the snow yeah. physics yeah. Of, like his dodging maneuvers because i'm like why is he dodging all the time why is he moving <laughs> all the time but like he was actually showcasing a lot of the tech features of it and i was like yeah. ah, i yeah. get it 
yeah and it looked phenomenal and so yeah like if you if you haven't seen it um i would say like i think it's a like lot a 19 minute trailer it. it's like a yeah, 13 yeah it's like or it's actually more like a 13 minute trailer of just like yeah get straight yeah, there, gameplay and it looks yeah so there good. there's a 13 and there's an uh 15 minute trailer yeah um, there's two different ones but it's of the same stuff it's just one's a little bit more extended but yeah, like like it's it's it definitely had those uh, like Sekiro, Sekiro meets like uh, 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 what's the Sekiro? The yeah, Sekiro. Yeah, Sekiro. Well, it's it was like that, but it, it kind of reminded me of the the PS4 game too, the Ghost of Tsushima, kind of like where they're going for a more authentic like. I mean, you, you had the guy that like literally was paying a banjo type thing without a head, but but I mean, for the most part, they had it. They they were trying to go for a more authentic look to like at least your like the world and stuff like that. There are some weird looking characters, like the architecture and the landscape and stuff. Yeah, yeah, about? yeah, yeah. Okay. Like it, that reminded me more of like of yeah, like Ghost of Tsushima, but. But the like the character models and like the weirdness reminds me definitely of like Sekiro, so it's right. like almost like a mix between those two. But but yeah, it's it's definitely worth going and checking out. It's it's and so like nothing has been confirmed yet. But it, it you know obviously PC, but but they there is word that they're trying to target um you know multiple uh um console like you know like multiple places to be able to play this so the, it's pretty it's pretty sure most people seem to be kind of sure that it's going to be a ps5 p uh and xbox series you know like console exclusives where it's well yeah it's where you can't five, play so. it yeah you yeah. can't play it anything past those but mm -hmm. but you know like the one of the things with unreal 5 though that that they said is that it will allow them to be able to make games for older consoles and still have things like ray tracing in it because it's being done on a on a um, program level. So, right, you know, like because we, I would imagine, like possibly we see like Zelda's and stuff like that in it uh, someday. I would like to, but in Unreal Five, no. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I don't nice know. Nice try. But, yeah. Keep dreaming. But it, it would be smart. Because like there's those videos of uh, of Zelda, uh, Breath of the Wild, running in 4K, 60 frames per second with ray tracing yeah, and all that, those, and it uh, looks so good. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of those like kind of like uh, part-time developers or kind of like students that like recreate uh, Ocarina of Time and Majora's yeah. Mask and like Unreal Engine. Like it looks good, but yeah, yeah. Nintendo Nintendo's like basically closing their eyes and shutting their shutting their ear holes. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Our so, fans yeah. don't want this. We know our fans. Yeah. And so and oh by the way, um that that Black Myth uh Wukong, uh the trailer stuff that the article I got it was on from was IGN yeah. uh, dot com. So you can definitely go there and check that out. Um the next the next thing that I kind of found for news, uh so there's this game, I guess, that was supposed to come out like what ten years ago, called Lego Star Wars: The Sky uh, The Skywalker Saga, and so we're actually gonna get some more an update on that of something that I feel like honestly wasn't it like five years ago that it was supposed to come out or something stupid? I have I have no idea. I, th I, I think it was. I stopped to paying attention to Lego games like years ago. I think it was supposed to come out. During when, when that that uh, when that me, man. the first new new Star Wars had come out of the three that that came out recently, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but yeah, it, it's in other words, it's just been a long time, and so yeah, they um this is from the brickfan.com, uh they they talked about getting some information that it will be premiering. A new pr premiere at uh, Gamescom, which is in a week. Yeah, and then the next one that I'm personally I'm super excited for is uh, there is uh, confirmation that a new Saints Row 
reveal will also be at Gamescom. Yeah, and I mean they um yeah they uh, Volition announced that they were developing the new Saints yep. Row like a year year or two ago. Yep. And now it seems like with the teaser image that they shared, it's yep. going to be a reboot of, reboot. Uh, of sorts. Yeah. Which which makes me even more excited because as I love Saints Row, but where that last game, those last games took everything, I was just, I was like, no, I just, it was like the worst part about it was, is, okay, your character had superpowers, so you could fly everywhere and jump yeah, everywhere. Saints like, Row 4, yeah. Yeah, you could just jump and fly everywhere. Okay, so mm-hmm. what's the point of having cars that you can jack then? Because now I don't need that to get around anywhere. No, it, yeah, it, I know. Eh, that's okay. Just, it just took a, it took away from the it took too much away from you know like what's there I and agree. it just made a lot so many things pointless in that game so like I did not like that so I'm I'm glad they're rebooting it because that that first story that the first game like so many people have not played that so many people started on two or three and, well yeah and, because the first one was trying to be more like a uh, uh, a uh, Grand Theft Auto clone, just with kind games. Of. Yeah, and kind of. They, the the I mean, second one still... kind of. Oh yeah, I, the the thing is though that first I still think they still did enough of the making like the humor and stuff and and made it their own. Like yeah, I mean it was closer to a GTA, but I still think it like was in my opinion I liked it better. Like as the second. Saints Row 1 came out I literally stopped caring about GTA at that point because I'm like okay this is my like this is my GTA this is like what I want I want more of the the corny and crazy weirdness and yeah. like you know like I mean not that that GTA didn't have that um you know because I I have enjoyed GTA games throughout the years but I just Saints Row was more all along my sense of humor, I guess, is is how to put it. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, I'm excited for this. It I, definitely I doesn't take wait. itself too seriously. Yeah, which is, you know, I I think games do better when they when they don't. Sometimes, you know, some games that shouldn't take themselves way too seriously. Sometimes. <laughs> all right. So yeah, and I kind of put those those uh, articles last for a reason because we are to our final topic, and that is I wanted to kind of just sit down with you, Stoy, and just talk about you know Gamescom. Like, what are what are some things that we that you think we might see there or want to see there? You know. That, well, I'll so tell you, the Saints Row is going to be there. Uh, yeah. They, are, they obviously announced uh, on uh, Jeff Keeley's tweet, yeah, uh, Twitter, where he says, uh, "Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be featured at Gamescom." So I'm hoping to see a pretty decent amount of gameplay here. So yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, just kind of curious about the reboot. Like, are mm-hmm. they going to reboot the whole entire? So we have to reboot the entire series because, um, you know, basically the world gets destroyed after four, mm-hmm. or as right at the beginning of four. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, granted, you. Granted, you put it back together and get out of hell, mm-hmm. but you know the game tried the, the game series tried to go in a different way. They tried to go what, what was that game? Um, Agents of Mayhem. Yeah. They yep. tried to kind of go off on their own little tangent, but that unfortunately didn't work. Yeah. For them, that was a kind of a kind of a failure on Volition's part. Um, yeah, I mean there there was some good things about that game. Like honestly, I would have stuck with it, but my problem was pretty early on into that game i run it ran into some game breaking bugs Mm -hmm. where literally i would go into the area that it told me to go to and none of the the bad guys or anything that were supposed to spawn there did i just ran around like what what am i supposed to be doing what's what's not happening what you know what's going on like it wouldn't it wouldn't let me and like every time i'd load up my save it still wouldn't let me do anything it wouldn't spawn any of the characters or nothing and then eventually there must have been a patch or something and it, and it fixed it but by that time i didn't care anymore so you know like yeah it, it, it overall, was pretty though, basic it gameplay 
Yeah, yeah, I just remember it was pretty basic gameplay. Like it was, it was like you're repeating a lot of the same objectives and a lot of the yeah. same gameplay elements. So it wasn't, it wasn't diverse enough for me. I guess I don't know. Yeah, it was a while yeah. since I played it, of course. But yeah, there was definitely some some good ideas there. Like I liked that, like each character kind of had their own strengths and weaknesses and like abilities yeah. and things there were like a ton that. Of characters. Yeah, yeah, there were. Yeah, that was cool. But yeah, I I just think. I think it lacked a. There wasn't quite that enough humor there for me either. Um, it did, uh, you know. Speaking of games, it, it just seemed to take itself a little too seriously, and and not. It wasn't like crazy and weird and funny enough for me um, to really feel like it was a Saints Row, you know, in the Saints Row universe. So, yeah, it definitely did not do too well, but. Yeah, I'm I'm really yeah, I can't wait for this game's come. <laughs> but yeah, is there is there any other like any kind of other games that you're thinking as far as like Xbox stuff you want to see or or think we we could possibly see or Well, see, that's the thing because like you know, I don't think Xbox would be the type of pers- type of you know, company to like say like, "Hey, let's show you some of the same stuff that we've already showed you again." Mm-hmm. And yeah. Which, unfortunately i think they probably do that like hey here's some more stuff we sh- you know a little bit more of what we showed you months ago you know we're going to show you again i don't think we're going to see anything relatively new besides maybe some third party stuff um yeah but I, yeah i, I sure. mean i would love to see at least something from forza motorsport 7 i would love yeah. to see something from fable yeah um that- but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I'll tell you what I would like to see. I would like to see Bioware come up with something for Dragon Age 4. They got to show us something. Like, that's my big thing. Um, Dragon Age 4, they've been teasing and they're talking about for years. I mean, that first trailer that we saw like three years ago at the Game Awards. Mm-hmm. And we haven't, re- all we've seen was tech demos. So yeah. they're going to have to show us something substantial to prove to the fans that have been kind of waiting for years like okay all right is it what's it going to look like let's see it let's see gameplay let's see characters let's meet characters let's meet some characters i want to see some extended gameplay stuff from them yeah yeah well and i you know like i was thinking i was trying to think of like i meant to look this up earlier because i couldn't remember it then but i think the game was the game called scroll or there, there was that that body, like morph, like horror what? that that body horror game that they had announced a long time ago that was going to be exclusive to Xbox that they showed once and then we never really got. There was a game that had been. Oh, I think I know what you're I think, talking about. It looks like HR Giger painting. Yeah, yeah, what you're talking about yeah. yeah. I think it literally is based on like something of that. Yeah, like, that art style. I'm trying to think yeah. of the name of that. Oh, yeah, it's, it. yeah, that's what I, I was going to do that earlier and I completely forgot to. But but yeah, like I would imagine we're we're got we've got to see some more of those games or get announcements for those games. Scorn. That Scorn. That's I knew yeah. it started with an an S. I, I was like, oh, what the hell is that mm-hmm. called? But yeah, like, I mean, games like that, that we've only literally seen like once and then they, they just never talked about it again. So. Yeah, I think the last time we saw anything was like, I mean, I think when they initially announced, yeah, when they initially announced like the Series X and they showed a lot of gameplay. So, I mean, it's slated to come out this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that's why I'm like, we've got to start seeing or hearing something from, even if they're, you know, if they're delayed or whatever, you know, we they've got to say something. So yeah, yeah. And those, you know, those are, yeah, those smaller titles and stuff. I, yeah, I, I know there was some talk, too, about, like, um, I think there was more, like, other horror games, too, that were supposed to be coming out. I don't think they were exclusive to Xbox or anything, but, like, some more uh, Silent Hill-style kind of games that were supposed to be coming out soon, too. But, yeah, I, well. I mean... I mean, I would like to see Silent Hill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I would like for Konami to be like, okay, all right, the fans have been asking for it for years. Why don't we just give them what they want and yeah. make money? Jeez. Yeah, I, w- I would Konami love that. Konami just hates money. <laughs> I would love that. Unless too, it's Pacheco but... machines. Yeah, I would love that too. But the only thing is, I have a feeling that Sony has probably got an exclusivity deal on that one. Because that's something that would be, you know, that would be a smart move on their part. I would hope it's on all consoles, but. But I, I feel like most of the, you know, like all the Silent Hills, basically, you can only play on a, on a, um, on PlayStation. Well, yeah, it was at, it was at one point, and then because uh, Silent Hill 2 came out first for the PlayStation 2, and yeah. then eventually, I think years later, it came out for the Xbox, and then obviously it became multi-platform after that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, or but was it? No, I, I, cause I think I don't think Silent Hill Three came no. out for the Xbox. No. Yeah, no, I, I think, I think there was a whole bunch of Silent Hill, like, and some spinoffs and stuff that that stayed there. But there, I, I think the only one to, hmm, God, I, I can't remember. Yeah, because Homecoming I, was multi-platform. Homecoming, Downpour yeah, was multi-platform. Yeah. And that was obviously after Downpour, it just pretty much <laughs> tanked. Um, yeah. Uh, Shattered Memories, obviously that was Wii exclusive until the PlayStation 2 picked it up, and uh-huh. Origin was PSP, but then it came to PS2. Yeah, yeah, it was mostly like a Sony franchise. Yeah, kind of. So that, I mean, which is fine. I do, I do plan on eventually getting a PS5. Um, but, but you know, so that I mean that I'll still have it to look forward to. But yeah, if we do get it, I'd just rather we get it. I don't care if I can't play it yet i just then just knowing that yeah just knowing that we're gonna get get one Mm -hmm. in general that's all i care about because yeah i mean that you know like it's been a long time that people have been wanting that so yeah but like you know like i i personally i know a lot of people were just kind of whatever on it but i loved the medium like i honestly i did too yeah i love i i really i kind of want them to continue that as a franchise like or or do something again like that because i really loved that game that was cool just the whole split screen stuff and and getting to experience that was a Mm -hmm. lot of fun so um but yeah i'm i mean i yeah i just hope i hope we get some uh some kind of news you know some kind of interesting or or you know there's still some things too like dealing with uh like i'm i would imagine they're gonna have like a like maybe even a game like something an announcement of some sort for game pass oh yeah they probably will they'll like you know all of a sudden say like okay this is up for game pass and this is available now so they'll probably have some more game pass releases um yeah I, I mean, I've just been loving all these three third party or indie games that, that have been coming lately because like, you know, like when I bought my Switch, that was mainly what I was focused on anyways, you know, outside the the handful of, of first party games that I that I, you know, were must haves. Like right. for me, that was kind of like my indie, my indie machine. And then Game Pass came out. And I still, you know, was playing a lot of indies on Switch, but then as as Microsoft has just been knocking it out of the park with adding all these indie games that I've been interested well, in. Well, and quality indie games. Yeah. Like, admittedly, yeah. like, I think Nintendo has always been very well known for having it be like a shovelware system. I mean, yeah. there's tons of indie games on the eShop, but a lot of it is kind of like garbage. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't yeah. mean to downplay it or like kind of insult the developers making these games, but... They're just so simply simple mechanic based indie games that it's like yeah. it's easy to kind of get lost in the shuffle. Whereas with Xbox, they they have really good indie games that you can play. Yeah, really good. And it's quality. and it's like yeah, and it's like they have all these indie games that you can buy and you can play, you know, off their well, store. Yeah. But but the Game Pass is like is is like kind of showing off the ones that that are you know they know people were, are going to kind of want to check out and it kind of helps you cut through all the fat you know that way so because yeah. yeah that's that's the problem is yeah and switch i mean i you know like more power to them like i mean it's it's nice for developers but you know like on on switch you you see so many games that are always in the sale 
because they they they'll put their game at a price that they already know they're not trying to charge for it just so they can put it on sale so it's constantly in that sale section so mm-hmm. it's always being seen because they know people are going to go to the sale section and they know they're going to they're going to you know f- flick through the pages of it and try to see what's for sale and then they know that their games are going to be seen that way so yeah that's that's part of the problem but but i mean yes yeah, switch does have a lot of great indie games available but like you said yeah it, it, it's sometimes it's hard to discover them there so yeah right so but going back to gamescom i you know when, when i said um i don't think xbox is going to come out with anything major i think i actually just googled a tweet uh, about gamescom because xbox is going to do a stream during yeah. it but they obviously said there's going to be no new reveals or major surprises so okay we shouldn't be expecting I, I shouldn't yeah. be expecting anything that I just said. <laughs> yeah. Uh with the exception, okay. I don't know if uh I don't know if EA is gonna be having anything there or whatever, um, in terms of yeah. uh what Bioware is doing or anything like that. But I would love to see some yeah. some extra stuff, but um Yeah, well, I think Bi- Bioware is not even gonna be in Gamescom. Okay, never mind. Gamescom is yeah. gonna suck. <laughs> Konami's gonna be there. Konami's gonna be there, so maybe we're gonna get some Silent Hill. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I mean, shouldn't say that because like Electronic Arts is gonna be there, so maybe I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I wasn't really expecting a like. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, like I do. I I kind of do think that we may have like that. You know, one more thing kind of moment. But I, I don't think, but I, you know, again, like I said, I, I'm more expecting to see some of these games that were already announced that, that have just been completely silent yeah. there and, you know, and, and, or look, here's a two minute extra long trailer compared to the one minute one we showed you a month ago. Great. Yeah. And there is one thing too that, and I don't remember if we talked about this on the show, but. I think we did, but there's there's been a rumor too going around because of people getting um like qu- uh, not quizzes but like surveys and stuff from Microsoft. There's there is a um a rumor that they may have their version of the uh, the uh, um Xbox controller that has uh, similar things that the PS5 has uh Mm -hmm. with with the like force feedback and and the different kinds of things like that and if i remember correctly i think a lot of times game com gamescom is somewhere where the where they will announce hardware sometimes like like little like smaller things like that yeah Uh, so i don't not saying that that i'm expecting something like that to happen there but if it was ever going to happen you know, there's a possibility in the future, like future games comms or something, because I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. But who knows? You know, but yeah. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't sound like we're going to get anything substantial um, yeah. from yeah. Microsoft in, in that sense. Uh, I think they they already played their big cards. I think mm-hmm. uh, developers are becoming more cautious these days where too much information is almost a curse. Yeah. To yeah. where it's like the more they showcase, the the more it could hurt their brand in the end. Because when you set high expectations, you know, that could almost be a detriment to you when the game comes out. Because, you know, mm-hmm. people have these high hopes for this game. And then all of a sudden, like, the game lands and it sizzles or it fizzles or whatever. And, yeah, it's like you disappoint your fan base and then that hurts your bottom line kind of yeah. going down the road because you get that bad press eventually. Well, and it, and like you know not in a bad way but it's it's like i feel like they've kind of been trying to condition us to get used to having you know where they there's big announcements from them but they want to also give that time to be able to to uh lift up and and support the indie games and you know and smaller smaller things and kind of you know not not go too crazy in one direction right like kind of you know, well, yeah, like, there's there there's specific conferences for specific types of games. So, like, yeah. you know, E3 is probably meant for your bigger showcases. But even though that's usually been the case, I think it's changed now, where that's kind of more of a platform for independent developers now than it used to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. You know, you got PAX East, PAX West, those kind of conferences. Even Gamescom can be a little bit of that, where 
you know, there's space for everybody now. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, either way I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. You know, anytime we get, you know, announcements and, and updates on things is always, always a good time in my opinion. So, right. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. I think, I think we'll end it with that then. Yeah. You know, talking about before the show, trying to be done in like close to an hour. Just just to temper (laughs) your expectations. Don't expect anything big from Microsoft at Gamescom. Yeah. Yeah, just they're probably going to show you some stuff that, you know, has already been announced, but I would expect to see some some cool stuff from other developers. Yeah. yeah. Give them a chance. Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully we'll have a lot of good stuff to talk about next uh, next week. You know, after Yeah, we can talk about everything that was uh, everything that was announced that's coming out for uh, Xbox, at least. So, yeah, because, yeah, it'll be tomorrow. Then uh, when you're if you're listening to this on Tuesday. It'll be tomorrow will be the Gamescom Wednesday. So, mm-hmm. all right. So, um, Stoy, uh, where can people find you? Well, uh, I'm part of the, besides being on Arsenal X, I'm also with the EXP cast. We're a video game podcast as well. And uh, we're part of the Boss Rush Games Network. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at EXP cast uh, for more. And also in the Discord, if you go to the Boss Rush Games Discord, you can follow us uh, in there as well. We have a room in there, and you can interact with us, and as well as the Arsenal X uh, podcast uh, group. I think someone posted a question in there. Um, oh, okay. I, I, I just saw recently, and uh, I want to address the question. Okay. So, somebody posted in there: Is Stoy single? And uh, I, 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 and a bunch of heart eye emojis. I don't know who this Spetsnaz eighty one is, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm here to answer your question to say no, I'm not single unfortunately for everybody out there so <laughs> but uh yeah if you go into the you know arsenal x room and under the ax questions you know ask what you want yeah if people are gonna ask questions i will definitely start looking more because i right now honestly i i just i have such a hard time with with uh using any kind of social media other than like you know the random things or like chatting with you guys like that's really the only time i load up but if people write questions give me a reason to uh use that <laughs> and go in there yeah you got you got to interact with people you got to interact yeah. with the listeners man you got to give yeah. them a give them a platform so yeah. it's one of the nice things about being in the exp cast room we have a uh, we have quite a bit of uh, engagement in there that's for sure yeah yeah, it's yeah. I, I hope we can get to get to a point where we have more of that because that's you know that's what I've always enjoyed in the past. Do you know doing these shows for a couple of years now and you know all the different uh, versions of you know what we've done mm-hmm. and just having the questions and having you know the interactions and and yeah. stuff is, is definitely what was my favorite part of of doing that stuff. So definitely, yeah. And for hopefully, sure. once Corey gets back. You know, we'll we'll probably do more streaming of stuff. I <clears throat> I need to learn all that stuff so I can even try to do it when so I don't have to rely on someone else to stream it. So, mm-hmm. but it's all it's all a learning process that that I uh, just haven't gotten a chance to really sit down and figure out. But yeah, you can you can find me though everywhere is Phantom NXS. Um, yeah, go to go to our website too and make sure you're uh hitting up all those other podcasts and giving them a listen to so and support support everyone else there they uh, they all deserve it so except us we deserve it more <laughs> yeah exactly <I'm> just <laughs> all right so we'll throw up the x because we're about to exit take it, it off. later